Greetings and welcome to this month's edition of the General Counsel uh, newsletter. Uh, and today I want to answer a question that I seem to get uh, several times a year. Uh, and that is, when does my business need multiple LLCs? Uh, I'm often asked by entrepreneurs, uh, especially those just starting out, uh, hey, I want to run uh, several different businesses that may or may not be related. Uh, and, and do I need multiple LLCs? Or can I run them uh, all in the same LLC? And what do I do there? Uh, and the answer, of course, like most legal questions, is that it depends. Uh, and whether or not you set up multiple LLCs, we're going to look at a few different factors here to help determine that. Um, first, I uh, want to think about the idea that real estate should always be in a separate entity. Uh, the idea of an LLC is that it limits your liability to the assets that your business already has. Uh, so if someone gets hurt or injured, first we're going to hope that you have insurance to cover that, but if you forgot to pay your premium or uh, the damages go beyond the insurance, we want to make sure that your, your business, the assets of your business, or your personal assets are protected uh, from that judgment. Uh, so the LLC limits your liability to just the assets that are contained in the LLC. So what that means for real estate is that if you have a business, if you have an engineering firm uh, and you're sued, you want to limit your liability to just the assets of the engineering firm. You don't want the assets, uh, a real estate asset that you might have in a separate LLC to be at risk. Um, so we really want to separate your, your big assets from one another. This also applies in situations like farms uh, that have significant amounts of assets and equipment. We might want to separate uh, the land from the equipment from actually farming operation. Uh, but, but the general rule of thumb here uh, for real estate is that if you have real estate, you should never buy it in the same legal entity as your actual business. You should always set up uh, a second LLC uh, for that purpose. Uh, similar apply, same thing applies e even if you're not necessarily a business owner, you just own some uh, residential real estates, uh, you want to look at having uh, separate LLCs for that investment properties that you might have. Uh, the second thing we want to look at when evaluating whether or not two different lines of business need to be in, uh, in different LLCs is the business risks. Uh, what, what are the risks that this business faces? Uh, if you have two businesses that are in completely different things and have completely different risks, then you're probably going to want to sell, uh, separate those into separate LLCs. For instance, if on one side you have a construction business that has a high amount of injuries and workers' comp claims and things along those lines, and on the other side you have a, a marketing firm uh, that doesn't have as many injuries because there's not as much physical activity, then those are two separate types of risks. Uh, and we want to separate those away from another, from one another. Um, so in that situation, that makes the most sense to separate those. Uh, the next thing is insurance requirements, kind of along the same line. You're going to want to work with your insurance agent on this. For instance, a construction company and a marketing firm are going to have different insurance requirements and different needs. So we're going to want to separate those because it's going to be hard for an insurance company to come in and insure both of those activities under the same roof. And so we're going to want to separate those. Uh, next is business partners. Uh, if you have partners in uh, one of the businesses but not in the other, we definitely have to separate those because we have to create separate ownership structures between those. So if you have some investors in one business and other investors in another business, those are separate LLCs. That's something we need to separate. Finally, employees. Uh, it depends who's working for you. If you have a marketing ad agency and an advertising agency and there's a lot of crossover between those employees, well then maybe we can keep those under the same roof. Uh, but if you have some employees working for some businesses uh, and not for another, then maybe we need to separate those as well.
Something else you might want to consider is the assets and the intellectual property of the business. Uh, similar to the real estate uh, is that if one business has a significant amount of assets, physical assets that are worth something or intellectual property such as a trademark or a brand or a patent or something along those lines, that's also something we might want to separate out. Um, and finally, uh, exit plans. What are the exit plans for the business? One business might be, like I said, real estate, right? That's going to provide income for the rest of your life and it's not something you're ever trying to sell. You just want to have that income and that's your retirement plan. Well, that might have to be separate than the marketing agency uh, where you're the owner of the company and once you reach retirement age, you're not going to want to be owning and managing the company anymore. You're going to want to try to sell it. So it's best to separate that out. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of factors uh, and it kind of depends on your business. Uh, it's usually not a very complicated phone call in a lot of situations, uh, but it is worth having that phone call with an attorney and, and just saying, hey, for 30 minutes, these are, the, these are the businesses that I have. What should I do? Let's discuss that and go over it. Uh, a lot of times what I sell clients is that it's, it's usually kind of obvious. It is some sort of real estate or it's a business that has one risk and, and there's another business that has completely separate risks. Or it's a spot where it's, hey, you know, you're, you're trying to run an advertising firm and a marketing agency, and maybe we start by having those under one roof, but as your business plan develops and as you're able to further refine who your ideal clients are and what work you actually want to be doing, it might work itself out. Um, so there's not always a bright line answer here, uh, but the key, I think, is if you look at the exit plans, the IP, and you look at the real estate, you look at the business risks, you look at the insurance, you look at whether you have partners, you look at the employees. If you consider all those factors, generally you'll have a better idea of whether or not you should be operating multiple LLCs or if you should just be fine operating under one. Thanks, and uh, if you have any questions, schedule a consult. We'll be able to talk more about this later.